Hello, my name is Matt Ostmeyer. I'm an NX Applications Engineer at Ceratech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to control the line segment resolution when exporting splines as polylines in the DXF DWG export tool inside of Siemens NX. This resolves a common problem many users encounter when importing a DXF to CAM programs that don't work well with splines. Most users quickly find the option to export spline as 2D polyline. However, encounter a secondary issue in that the 2D polyline export is comprised of an enormous number of very small line segments, which again, doesn't work well in their CAM program. The reason this is happening is that, by default, the deviation tolerance NX uses to approximate the spline with polylines is very tight. Note that a spline is different from a true circular segment. Circular arcs, comprised of a center point and diameter, do remain unchanged in polyline exports. However, splines, which have continuously variable geometry, must be represented by approximated faceted line segments. What users in this situation need is a way to increase deviation tolerance from the original spline so that the polyline approximations of splines deviate somewhat further, but are in turn longer segments that are much easier for certain CAM programs to handle. By approximating splines with reasonably sized polylines, the DXF exported by NX can be quickly and easily loaded, programmed, and ready to cut in virtually any CAM utility. This tolerance is actually quite easy to control in NX, but it is not widely known because the control resides in a definition file rather than the core user interface. Now I'm going to show you how to find and update that definition file so that you can enjoy complete control over your 2D polyline export of spline geometry created in NX. The first thing we are going to do is create a baseline definition file for your preferred export settings. In NX, I go to File, Export, AutoCAD DXF DWG. The first dialog that comes up is Input and Output. And I'm going to select DXF here, although you can choose DXF or DWG, whatever you prefer. Then I go to the Options tab. Under DXF DWG Revision, I can choose any of these options, but for the purposes of this demo, it doesn't matter, so I'm going to leave it at 2004. Then, under Export Spline As, I'm going to change the dropdown from Spline to 2D Polyline. And I'm going to select the radio box for Remove Overlapping Entities. This is helpful in case you inadvertently have any overlapping entities created in your file which would cause problems with your CAM software. Now, if I wanted to change any options related to fonts, line styles, or crosshatch, I could do that now. Or I could also go back to my Data to Export tab and select which layers to include or exclude. But I'm not worried about any of this. So I'm going to go to the Save Settings tab and select a location to save my new definition file. You'll see that by default, it comes up C, Program Files, Siemens, NX2412, that's the version I'm running, DXF DWG, and the existing DXF DWG definition file is in this location. I'm gonna save my new file as DXF Polyline 2, and I'll click OK. Now, you'll notice that you get an error here. You don't have permission to save in this location. If you had opened NX as an administrator, you would have permission to save in this restricted folder. But because I did not open NX as an administrator, I can't save here. And I don't want to save in Matt Ostmeyer folder instead, so I'm going to just say no. And now I'll navigate to a location that I would like to save this. I'm going to go to my demonstration folder I have set up for this uh, project. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to then go and hit the Save button. This is very important. You don't say Finish or Cancel. You have to save this. Now that the file is saved, I just say OK. And then I click Cancel because we're not actually exporting anything at this time. Now that I've created my new definition file, I'm going to navigate to the location that I've saved that definition file. I've already done that here, and you can see that NX has created a crosshatch mapping, a line style mapping, and a text font mapping file in addition to my definition file. 
I don't need any of these for this purpose, so I'm going to delete them. Now to edit my new definition file, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to say open with notepad. Here you can see all of the export settings that are controlled by the system. We are interested in this B spline to P line conversion tolerance. I'm going to change the value, the stock value of 0 0.08 to 2. Now I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure what that value refers to. <laughs> in terms of length unit, it scales differently depending on the size of the DXF. So you can't think of it as a millimeter, for instance. But a bigger value equals a looser tolerance and less segments. A smaller value equals a tighter tolerance and more segments. So I've changed this to two. Now I will save the file and close it. You can use this file from any location. However, I'll choose to copy it into the standard NX location so that I always know exactly where to find it. Right click on it, select cut, go over to the C program files, Siemens, NX2412, DXF, DWG folder, and say paste. You'll need to provide administrator permission. I'm going to say continue because I'm an administrator. And now you'll see an error that has to do with Windows. If you've noticed, I have saved this definition file to a network drive location. Windows does not allow you to copy a file from a network drive location into a protected local file. So I'll say, okay, and to get around this, I'll cut it from the network location and I'll paste it to my desktop. And then from my desktop, I will cut and paste into my desired protected folder, saying continue with my administrator permissions. Now, the next time you need to export a DXF, you can go to File, Export, AutoCAD DXF DWG, and then select the Load Settings tab, click on the Browse folder, and you'll notice that alongside the stock DXF DWG file is the new DXF Polyline 2 that we created. We can select this from here, and then it will load those settings, including that new tolerance. But before I do this, to see what we've accomplished, let's make a little export file to test. I'll cancel out of here. We'll make a new file, and we'll call this spline. Say OK. I'll make a sketch on the top plane. And I'll draw a spline. I'll also put a circle so that we, we can look at the difference between a spline and the circle in the export. We'll say finish. And now let's export this in two ways. The first way I'm going to export with the stock DXF DWG settings. I'm going to go here and make sure. Okay. So you can see it's actually already recognized my new definition file as an alternative to the stock, but I'll select the stock file. And you can see it's going to go to DXF. It's going to go to the correct folder. Now for the data to export, I'm going to select selected objects. And then I'm going to use my selection filter set to curve and click on the sketch. You can see that that is selected two objects, the spline and the circle. And for the export view, I'm going to make sure that I choose the selected view of top because that is a proper orientation for this sketch. And we're going to click next. And you can see that it remembers my prior settings as 2004 and 2D polyline. But this is not going to load my new tolerance. I have no other settings uh, to make here, so I'm going to say finish. And yes, we can go ahead and save this file or we can say continue and not, doesn't matter. And now let's export it a second time. This time I'm going to load the settings from our new DXF Polyline 2 with the looser tolerance for the Polyline export. We'll go to next and we'll see that it wants to call it the same name. I'm going to say 2. 
add the underscore two to the end of it. You can see it's still DXF and 2D. For data to export, same thing, selected objects, curve, and in our part navigator, select the sketch. It has both my circle and spline. In the work view, uh, I'm going to change to top. And then I'll double check that the options are still set as 2004, 2D polyline, remove overlapping entities, finish. Let's see what we've created. I'm going to open the first spline that we created. And we'll just open this into a drawing sheet of lines and arcs with groups, say finish. And let's examine this. We see that there are 195 objects. Okay, let's import our second export. Spline two. And now you can already see that there's some more faceting that's occurred here. And when I highlight all the objects, there are only 44 objects. So we went down from 195 line segments to 44 line segments. Now, let's look at how this compares to our original spline. I'll start by going to my tighter tolerance spline export. I'll highlight all these imported polylines. Control C for copy. Go to my original spline sketch. Control V for paste. Now I'm going to do Control T to transform. I'm going to go from a point to a point. I'm going to move from this point on my imported geometry back to this point on my original spline. Say OK. And now those uh, imported polylines are overlapping my original spline. Now if I zoom in, I can go to groups and hide my imported segments. And you'll see that there's actually some faceting occurring on the original spline. Now this has to do with graphics performance and not actually the original spline. So I'm going to go to my preferences, visualization, and under performance and accuracy, I'm going to move my edge accuracy up to the most accurate and also while I'm at it, my surface accuracy to the most accurate, say okay. Now you'll see that when I zoom in, the faceting has gone away on the original spline. And when I look at my imported spline, we can really see the true deviation. It's very, very tight to the original spline. Let's go ahead and copy my looser tolerance spline into my original part file as well. We'll highlight everything, control C to copy, go back to my spline part file, control V to paste. We'll do control T to move from point to point, and now they're overlapping. And now you can see that my second imported polyline geometry deviates much further from the original spline than the tighter tolerance geometry did. But let's see just how far this is deviating. Let's hide the tighter tolerance import and let's measure along uh, maybe this, this largest deviation here from the spline to a point, uh, the, center, the midpoint of this segment. And we'll see that the deviation is a maximum of about 0.0618 inches. Okay, well, let's look at this related to the tire tolerance spline. We can measure from the original spline to the midpoint of a segment in that area. And we can see that the deviation is about 0 0.0019 inches. So quite a bit tighter tolerance in that polyline approximation. Now, since we had a, a circle in our imports here, let's also look at what that imports as. I'm going to hide my original sketch. I'm going to zoom in on the circle and measure that circle. I can measure the midpoint because it is a true circle and it has a midpoint. I can also measure the circle. Uh, radius or diameter because it remains a true circle. So there you can see the difference between B spline to polyline conversion tolerance at 0 0.08 versus 2 for this particular spline.
and you can also see how the circle behaves in that same export. And that concludes this demonstration. I hope that your question is resolved, and you can now control the spline segment size in your DXF and DWG exports. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.